Yes, uh, hello again. Uh, welcome. Yes, now we are going to learn how to add data, how to enter data in QGIS. And we are going to learn specifically how to enter Excel data. That means a data that you, you've already prepared and you would want to, 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 to add this data to, to, to your... To your, to your, you want to convert this data, maybe it's a, it's a point data, and you want to convert it to, to a shape file, but you have to enter it to QGIS. But again, we are also going to to learn how to add uh, uh, vector data, that is shape files, and then also we shall learn how to add uh, raster data in, 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 in QGIS. And finally, come up with a good map, a map that you can use. To, to display your uh, different different uh, maps that you've developed. We are also going to do some data visualization in this particular video. So pay attention to this uh, as we, we as as we get we get started. So yes, I I I already have um, I already have my 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 data saved in, in a folder and in this particular folder uh, under band navigation I have uh, data in this particular folder, and I have crime data for Kampala. This crime data is in Excel format. I've saved it as a, a CSV file. And uh, the most important thing, let's first open this data and we we'll get to know what this data is all about. Now, uh, this data here, one, it has the city name, which is Kampala. It has division names, the different divisions in Kampala. Then it has the latitude and longitude. And it has the different types of theft within 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 Kampala. The different kinds of crime within Kampala. We have theft, we have fraud, we have assault, we have burglary, so, and the different number of times that that uh, that these these particular uh, crimes have been reported in 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 each in each location. Uh, after you you have entered your data in this format, you need to save it as a CSV file. So uh, I just want again to show you how to save this data. So you browse the folder where you're working in. And you need to save this data as a CSV file. But remember, you need to save it as there are several CSVs here. So you need to you need to select the right one, which is a CSV uh, comma delimited. That is the one you need to save. You need to save the data. Otherwise, if you do not save it as that, then you will not have uh, you will not have what you will not have. Uh, the right file to work with and it will not it will not work so you make sure you save it as a comma delimited after you've saved your 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 file i'm not going to save because i already saved this uh, after you've saved your file make sure you now you go to your 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 qgis now within the qgis environment here i already told you that if you want to add data you come to this particular button which is called uh, open data source manager so you need to open this data source manager and when you open the data source manager, you have the different types of data sets that you need to add here. Right now, by default, it's bringing me uh, for me as a, a vector, vector data here. But we are interested in in uh, in a delimited text. We are interested in a CSV file, so we come to the de delimited text here. Once we click on this, it is it is very very important for us to to browse to where we have saved our file. For example, here, we want to enter the file here under the fi under file name here. So we shall browse to our to our our folder here and 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 uh, take this folder to this this particular uh, window here. Now we have our folder here. It's already uh, it's already uh, it has already been entered here and the other things remain as default make sure that under file format it is a csv because when it is in another format it will not work so make sure it is in csv format another very very important thing to note is that under under the 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 geometry definition here make sure that the x under x field we have the longitude and under the y field here we have the latitude otherwise if you do not have that then it will not work the other important thing is for you to know the coordinate system where you're working in and uh, and uh, also uh, if you if it if you if you have not defined any coordinate system please come and define the coordinate system and in this case we are working in the in this coordinate system here for you to know the coordinate system that you're working in again 
it is very important to go and 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 type just go on google and type what is the coordinate system of a particular place for example kampala was the coordinate system within kampala and it will give you the coordinate system that you're working in and the coordinate system to add in in qgis but alternatively if you already know the coordinate system that you're working in you can you can you can uh, uh look for the coordinate system within here and select it within this place of course uh uh, it is important for you to always confirm, to always read and understand what you're doing. You don't have to just try everything. There are too many for you to try. So you don't have to try any, everything, but make sure you read and you know what you're doing. Right now, uh, right now, this is within the, 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 the right uh, coordinate system that I'm working in. So I've already, I've already placed it here and I'll leave it as it is. And then uh, when you when you when you uh, go a little down, you'll be able to see the RGB table here, uh, showing uh, the different uh, your data actually showing you what is in with you what is within your data, and exactly this is the data you had. So yes, that is to confirm that you've entered the right data. After that, just click on Enter, Add. Not not enter, but click on add. And after clicking on add, you can close. So once you've clicked that, you will be able to see uh, your you are points within here but of course this these are just points they're still they are not yet they're not these are they are not yet in in a, in a shape file format and that means you cannot manipulate them so much within the uh, as it is right now the next step we need to do is to convert these these points into a shape file into a shape file for us to be able for us to be able to 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 manipulate this data to visualize this data to create some good maps so we need to convert this now into a shape file and for you to convert this is very easy it's not hard one thing you need to do is one once you've already entered your data here even before uh you convert this data first also come and open the attribute table here and and see you've already seen it when you enter the data but it's good for you to to see it from here and get to know yes this is the attribute this is the attribute table and this is how my data looks like you can explore your data and see and this is all okay so once you've done that just close this and then we need to export this now to, to convert this to a shape file to do this right click on 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 uh, make sure you highlighted this and then right click on it and come to export now under export we shall say export feature as that is what we are interested in because we want now we now want now to export as a shape file at first if you have never done this before you may find it as a geo package like that but you're not interested in a geo package you're interested in, in on a on a on a shape file so one thing is one thing that you need to do to, to do is to know exactly what you're working with now i, I need to convert this to a shape file when i click on that the next thing that i need to do is to define where i'm going to where i want my data to go to so the working folder that i have and in this case i will basically save this as a crime data for for kampala but because i already had one there I will make this I will just add a two to it so so that I can I can I can identify it easily so after doing that I'll have to click on save yes and 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 uh, my file will already come there with the working directory and where the file is going to be saved for this layer name just ignore it leave it the way it is and uh, of course it is important for you to determine again the coordinate system that you want to export this data to otherwise if you have not defined this which is the uh, the crs here if you have not defined it then it will be quite difficult for you and you will not be able to 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 to, to you will export it yes but but it will go into another location maybe it will go to a, to the sea or somewhere else or a different location which is not within the the location where kampala is and that means you will not be able to overlay it with other shape files already that are already existing within kampala so it is um, and in case you want to do that you want to make any change again you can always come back here and and and, and make the changes from here then after that yes uh just leave everything as it is uh do not change anything and then click okay so yes when you click okay you find your data has come here and now we have your two data sets we have this one which which i have just exported and then we had we had the first one which is this one here so right now uh we have our shape file here which these are points already yes but they are in uh, in a shape file format and, and 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 now we can now visualize this data in, in in very very many ways i have 
put this one off because this this was the first data we, we, we worked with we brought here in the csv format but now i can decide to put it off by just unticking it or i can even remove it and if i want to remove this data i come i, I come to the data right click on it and then remove layer so when i remove layer uh it will tell it will make sure that i am interested to remove this so it will ask me yeah remove uh legend entries and of course i have to confirm that i want to remove this layer and if i don't want to remove the layer i will cancel but if i want to remove the layer like now i can remove it because i already have the other one yes it will go off like that and then you remain with this one that you can work with the next thing we need to do is to is to try to explore our data and see what our data is to do this you need to go to symbology but to go to symbology come to properties and under properties another window should be able to open yes we have a window that has opened here and then here you come uh, in at uh, times it may come when it is and uh, when it is it is maybe in information or source uh, so what you need to do is come to symbology and under symbology you can come here and try to 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 visualize your data for example if i go to gradient colors here i should be able to see that uh, the color has already changed i can also change this color for, to any other color that i'm interested in and then um the other thing is what do i need to visualize i, I I will be able to see here the 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 the, new, uh, the, the different data sets that I that I have for example the number of theft the number of fraud the number of assault and burglary and for for this case we want to we want to visualize theft and see the pattern of thefts within Kampala which places have high thefts versus which places that have which points that have uh maybe low cases of theft and after we have done that it is very important for you to come here uh to come here under uh, under uh, classes here so under classes uh when you've already put the theft here you also need to determine the the number of classes that you want under the theft here so i can decide to say i want i want uh for example two classes just to see uh two classes or i can decide to say i want five classes which counts by default at times and then uh, maybe i can want six or seven or eight whatever classes that i want for this case let's just leave it at maybe uh let us say let us say eight classes if you want maybe to see up to eight classes and um, the next thing that we need to do after doing that just come to click apply so when you click apply you would be able to see yes places that have uh that have uh low uh, points that have low low crime rates versus points that have high high crime rate or theft so you will be able to see that and now you can see that oh these other points that are in red have actually a very high crime rate vis -vis the points that are that that, that uh, are marked uh with a little some are white i can say white yes so so you can you can see the patterns the other thing is imagine i wanted to look at the patterns of fraud uh, i would also do the do exactly the same but in this case i can leave everything as default and i just come and and click on fraud but when you click on fraud things may not change you just i, I always uh, recommend that maybe you come and try to play around here to change this so once you once you change that it will automatically change and you will be able to see that even the the, the range of, of of the of the the range of the 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 the, the cases uh, have now reduced it is it is between 1 and 20 last time we had between 1 and 50 for for theft so you realize that these are these are this, this is how you try to visualize your data to understand your data and i may want to see in which which places actually specific places in kampala that have uh, different uh, different cases so i need to bring a shape file a shape file that has the boundaries of kampala metropolitan area to be able to see this so to do that i will just come again to, to add data and then i add now a shape file but when i want to add a shape file now i'm adding a vector because shape files are in ve vector format so i'll come and i'll come here and then i come and uh, browse to where the shape file is saved in this case it is shaped is it is saved under and uh, urban navigation uh, uh get the data package and then uh i'll come here yes and this is this is this is the specific data that i want the uh gmk which is the greater kampala metropolitan greater kampala 
metropolitan area. So um, if I uh, the, the, the specific data that I'm interested in is a shape file. So you see very many GMKs here, but the one I'm interested in is a shape file. But there are two shape files when you look at the, from the name here. But it is important for you to look at the file type. When you look at the file type, you'll see this is a shape file and this is just a, a document. So you need to you need to to take in the shape file. So you click on you select shape file, and then uh, after. For example, yeah, you have selected shape file. After selecting shape file, you click open. So when you click open, it automatically comes here. After doing that, you add, click on add. When you click on add, it will open for you this window, and you have to confirm whether whether uh, this data is within uh, the right coordinate system. And it's already showing you here that it's in Uganda and it's within the area of Kampala, as you see. But it's important for you to know. The coordinate system where this data is and in this case it is within this coordinate system again you need to read to understand the coordinate systems for you to be able to do this and then once you say okay then when you add your data you should you should have added already you close this now when you close yes the data has come but now the challenge you are facing now is that uh, the data is 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 covering our points so it has overlaid over our points i have added it twice i think because i have i have i clicked i clicked uh, the add the add uh twice that's why it has added it twice so i'll just have to uh remove one yes i'll remove one of it so that i remain with one now what happens is if i want to have my points overlay over this i will just have to drag this below the points here so when I drag it below the point, now uh, the points overlay over that. And and you look at, at your map and your map looks now, yeah, it's, there's something you're trying to see areas now you have boundaries and, and, and but you maybe want to also uh, see, you will want to see, uh, maybe you want to have a different kind of field color for this. Maybe the, that color is not the best for you. You want to change the color. You can always change the colors from here. You can play around and try to change your color. And when you change the color, you can see now the color is changing for you. For you people who, for those who want color to change the colors. For me, I'm not very good at, at colors. So please bear with me because my color choice are always the worst, I believe. But uh, also as a JS expert, and you have to learn how to select very good colors. So yes, over time uh, of doing this work, I have learned how to select good, good, good colors. But in this case, I'll leave it at, at the yes hollow like this, so that I can be able to to have a very uh, good background for my from to view my my different points because the points are also colored, so I don't need to have a colored background. So after doing this, the next step that we need to do is to. To bring in a, maybe a base a base map. Now we need to bring a base map to see whether whether uh, this 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 again to confirm whether even the shape file that we are working in is within the right place. Yeah, and to do this we need to bring a base map and uh, a base map from OpenStreetMap. We shall just come to to web here under web. We come to Quick Map Services and then come to uh, OSM, which I already installed. Uh, as a plugin already so you need to very important thing you need to install the quick map services as a plugin so you go to install plugin and plugin that and, and install it and then also you need to install the quick osm for you to be able to, to 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 use this and after that you come to this and when you click okay yes your map should already appear here but one thing you have to note that i did not make it actually hollow but uh, what i did was to i i, I made the uh, I, I made the, the, the map look, uh, I made the color actually, I picked a white color, yeah, so that is what I picked. So it's, it's, uh, it's important for us always to, 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 to know how to, to work out with all this and we need to, to, to be able, uh, to, so if I come to, I can just decide maybe to change the, the, the fill color. So that I, I remove the the outline, yeah. I remove I remove the outline and I only make sure that now it is not an outline, but it is just a. I know it's not a fill color, but I just have it as an outline. I can make it like that. So you need to learn how you need to 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 play around with this and be in position to uh, and be in, pos in position to manipulate the work you are that you are doing, yeah. After we have done this, uh, we need to 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 create a map. Yeah, we now need to create a map, our very first map from our GIS project. Yes, 
yeah thank you very much uh to create a map go to the next video uh just on the same video series and uh, create map uh using qgis creating your very first map and then yeah so see you in the next in the next video thank you very much uh bye